Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of HOT. Today, I got a very special Power Rangers review for you. This is the New York Comic Con exclusive Power Rangers Fighting Spirit figure set. So, this is actually from New York Comic Con 2017. I've actually had this for quite a while, uh, so I know I'm really late in opening it, but finally got the chance to get around to doing this review. So here it is. So this is a Comic Con exclusive. So what that means is if you didn't buy this already, be prepared to, to pay a lot on eBay, uh, if it's even worth it. We're gonna open it up and find out, but uh, yeah, Comic-Con exclusives are uh, not very fun on the wallet. But uh, this is a, a set of three legacy figures. You got your Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, Mighty Morphin White Ranger, and Zeo Red Ranger. What do those all have in common? Well, Tommy, as you can see, you have the Dino Thunder Black Ranger here. Now this Dino Thunder Black Ranger is not a figure in the set. So why is he here? Well, fans of Power Rangers should obviously recognize from Power Rangers Dino Thunder the episode Fighting Spirit, uh, where Tommy, right, he was the black Dino Thunder Ranger um, in that season. So he is in a coma, I believe, and he ends up fighting his former Ranger selves as Mighty Morphin Green and White and Zeo Red. So that's a really cool idea for a set. And, and normally, you know, we do get a lot of Tommy. It's like Tommy Overload. But I'm cool with this set because I think it's so cool how they recognize the Power Rangers history with Dino Thunder and, and that sort of thing. And like just, I don't know, it was, it was a neat idea for a concept. Uh, so let's turn this thing around and you can see on the back the three Rangers that it comes with. Now, not just to any three Rangers, all right? These are they're very specific legacy figures and, and, uh, and that's why I bought it. Because I already have green and white. Zeo Red is... Um, showing up in, in some stores already. I, I don't have it yet, but I have green and white, but they're very special. And so let's let's kind of take a look at why they're very special. So we're gonna pull off this, this little sleeve here, and inside we're going to see the true box for the set right here. There we go. This is the Fighting Spirit figure set. And what you're gonna see is these are all metallic figures, meaning they're kind of got this like pearly, translucent sort of a color. Uh, so green and white are different now because they're they're all pearly and metallic-y. Zeo Red also is different from the regular release. I don't have the regular release yet, but he's uh, kind of metallic-y and stuff. Uh, very much like these figures that have released in the past um, for the Mighty Morphin Red and the, the movie Red as well, as more more closely to, to this Red Ranger, as you can kind of see. Um, so we'll do some comparisons when I open it up. But the other really cool thing, for those that, that may or may not remember, right? So this is the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger. In Fighting Spirit, they, for whatever reason, painted the helmet silver at the top. And it was, it was a mistake, but it sort of became a part of the Power Rangers legacy. Uh, and so it's, it's, you know, it's a little different for some reason why it was silver. So they decided for this legacy fighting spirit figure set, they're going to paint it silver. So it's accurate to the show. So it's now accurate to something that was inaccurate on the TV show, which is so crazy to think about. But I, I have to give that exposition. I know I'm talking a lot, but just to fully understand why they made this. And I think it's actually really cool. Um, so, yep, there's the, uh, so the back of the box here shows like the toy forms of it there. So anyways, um, with that being said, let's just uh, get this thing open and, and take a look. All right, we have the figures out of the packaging. Here they are, and they look great. I actually do like the metallic-y, pearly look that the figures have. Um, it makes it kind of shine a little bit more and pop a little bit more, especially for like a, a Comic-Con exclusive type of item, you know? Um, I do prefer the regular, you know, versions, uh, just for more show accuracy and that sort of thing, but these are still kind of nice. Uh, that being said, I wouldn't normally just buy metallic -y versions of these figures if that was the only thing that's different. So what's really cool about this is some of the unique stuff that I mentioned. Obviously, the Green Ranger, I talked about the silver stripes on the on the helmet, but there's some other changes there more accurate to the Legacy, uh, or sorry, to the Fighting Spirit episode from Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Uh, and also, the Zeo Red Ranger comes with uh, this weapon right here that I don't believe the regular Zeo Red Ranger comes with. So uh, similarly, they did that for the Power Sword for the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. Uh, now, granted, they re-released a metallic version and so on, but in the past, that was exclusive at one point. So the only Ranger 
that just has paint differences is Mighty Morphin White, uh, being this pearly white kind of translucent color. Um, but there's nothing else new about them. Uh, I guess technically these are paint differences too with the Green Ranger, but these are like specific referenced items from the episode, and that's why it's done. And then you have an extra weapon from here. So some special stuff in the set in terms of why you would want to buy it. So let's start with the White Ranger since there's the least amount of specialness with it, I guess. So these guys can go take a nap in the back over there. Um, so yeah, here he is right here. Uh, looks really cool. This whole pearly white look is very interesting, very interesting. And I, I actually really like the fact that they did Saba in the same style. I did not expect that. I thought they would just kind of stick the regular version of Saba in there as well. But they actually did a, uh, a pearly white kind of look to Saba, which actually is really cool. Uh, so as you can see, this whole um, part right here is that special... Uh, metallic-y, pearly color. And then you have nice shiny silver on the blade there, of course, and the shiny gold there, silver at the top. Uh, so so the paint is still the same, it's just the main plastic they used um, is, is the different pearly color, which is kind of cool. So for comparison, I have the regular Saba right here. If I can get it out of his hands for this other figure. Okay, here we go. So here is the comparison of the two. Obviously, I prefer the regular Saba, of course, you know, it's the solid white and everything, but it's still neat. It, it's neat to have that alternative um, version right there. So, pretty cool. So there you have it. Um, now in terms of the actual figure, let's do a little comparison as well, and then we'll get into the articulation and, and so on. Oh, I just, I think I dropped something. What did I drop? I think I dropped his holster somewhere. I don't know where it went. It, oh, there it is. Okay, got it. So let me put the holster on and then we'll do a full comparison right here. So, right here is the regular White Ranger and then on the right is the uh, special fighting spirit version right here. So, um, obviously you can see the paint difference, but everything else is the same. Um, the In terms of the amount of paint and everything, in fact, the exact same shade of paint uh, the same color, um, yeah, everything else is, is the exact same. Uh, the helmet does look a little odd because the, the white parts that are right there, almost like the eyes of the tiger on the helmet, are that pearly white there, so it looks slightly different, but it's, you know, and same with the side pieces right there, um, but it's the gold and the black and everything else is, is the exact same. So, there you have that. So. Let's focus on the new figure right here. Articulation-wise, um, if you have the old figure, it's gonna be the same, but let's do a quick little recap here. So the head does rotate all the way around, moves up and down as well, so decent amount of, of rotation there. The arms can rotate all the way around, kind of a little bit at an angle because of the shield there. Um, they do move up and down, um, like so. You can also rotate this um, part right here, if I can try and show it. There we go, kind of. Um, so that rotates. He can bend at the elbows. There's a double joint right there. Okay. Uh, this whole piece right here does rotate, and then um, the hand rotates as well. So, there you have that. Um, the uh, chest piece does rotate forward and back, like so, and the whole body can turn around like that. The legs, he can do the splits. Uh, this little holster does, you know, detach if you need to as well. Um, he can move the legs forward and back a little bit, and then he can also rotate the legs like that. Double joint at the knee. This whole boot piece rotates, and then the foot um, doesn't go really forwards or backwards, but it kind of does 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 this little sideways twist sort of thing, uh, which is very interesting. But that actually works out very well because when you're trying to pose them, you can kind of twist the foot a little bit just right and, and get them to actually stand in, in much better poses uh, that way. So that's actually pretty nice. So yeah, pretty good articulation. I mean, these figures have always been pretty great at their articulation and, and definitely gives you a lot of flexibility there for the poses that you can do. Of course, Saba can, um, can kind of stay in stay in the in the holster there the best way to do it is you just sort of take it off and open up like that and try him try and attach him in like that if i can 
kind of have to push it in there a little bit. There we go. Just like that. And that way he just sort of, you know, hangs. I don't, is that even right or does it go here? Maybe it goes down here in this blade part. Maybe, uh, yeah, I think that's right. Never mind. I was choking him around the neck. I was like, that doesn't look right. Um, so you kind of have to fidget with it a little bit to get it to, uh, to fit in there properly. Let me take off the holster and do it. Maybe if I slide it through like that, that'll be easier. No? Okay, never mind. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's what I was trying to do. So, there you go. That's better. So you can kind of have him on the side like that, which definitely looks pretty cool. You know, he's kind of posed and ready to go. Um, but personally, you know, Saba is just cool. I love the sword. So he's got he's to have him in an action pose. He's got to be ready to fight, you know? So, boom. You can have it like that. You can have him holding Saba with the head up, however you want to do it. Lots of flexibility there. So, pretty cool figure. There you have it. On to the Green Ranger right here. So this is one of the main special items in the set because of the exclusives that surround the, uh, the, the new paint job and so on. So uh, I have my regular Green Ranger here as well. Uh, the weapons that he comes with, right, the Sword of Darkness, as well as the Dragon Dagger, are the exact same. Uh, Paint-wise, the metallic-wise, there's no pearly, translucent paint or anything. It's it's the exact same ones, in case you're wondering. So that has not changed. Um, the main difference is that you're going to notice, obviously you have the helmet, right? So um, if I kind of show you the helmet right here, you have the silver stripes. Um, so that is done purposefully on the Fighting Spirit version to match the episode. So that definitely looks really cool. Um, I, I think it looks nice in this figure. Also... You'll notice the, the Power Morpher um, is silver around the sides instead of gold. So in the Fighting Spirit episode, I believe that was the case. So they purposefully made it silver for this figure. And the holster as well was white on the show um, in that episode versus the usual black. So um, lots of little differences like that, but it really just shows that attention to detail in making this figure... Um, well, what's, what's the term that I use, I think? Uh, uh, accurately inaccurate, I guess, because it was inaccurate in Fighting Spirit, but it's accurate to the inaccuracies from Fighting Spirit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you get what I'm trying to say. Also, the Green Ranger does come with alternate hands right here, so you do have these two other alternate hands. I believe it's the same ones that came with the regular Green Ranger, so, um, I could pop it out and show you. It's You just take out the hands, pop it back in. I hate doing that, though, because I'm always afraid that I'm going to break them. So I personally don't really like the alternate hands as much. I guess it's cool that they have them so that you can do it once, get the hand that you want, and then you're set. But I personally just don't like constantly doing it because I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Um, but at least you have that option. So, um, so yeah, articulation-wise, it's going to be the same as the White Ranger, so I'm not going to get into... Um, uh, specifics with it. I just kind of want to show you overall just the, the paint and stuff that they did. Uh, now, in Fighting Spirit, he did not have the Sword of Darkness, so I think they just threw it in there because the regular Green Ranger release had it, so they said, why not just throw in an extra weapon? So that's nice, you know, definitely nice that they included that, but uh, they didn't have to. Um, and of course, the Dragon Dagger can fit right in if you, if you need it to, and yeah, there you go. So I think it looks really cool. I think this pearly green color um, is actually really nice. It has a, a nice little shine to it. You know, especially the helmet really makes it pop more and the silver on the helmet as well. Just overall just makes it look really, really nice. So I dig it. I think it's it's pretty cool. I like the, the idea behind this release. I like it. So there we have it. And last but not least, we have the Zeo Red Ranger finally something from Zio. It has been way too long, um, and we finally have something. So, yeah, I do actually have a couple other Zio figures that I'm going to be doing a review of soon. I just have not opened them up yet. But let's take a look at uh, what this thing comes with first. So he actually has two little holsters here for all the various uh, accessories that he comes with. So the, the main accessories uh, that he has that are also in the regular release are... This little blade right here. I have not watched Zio in a long time, to be honest with you, so I don't remember the names of some of these weapons and that sort of thing, but uh, but he has that. He has the little blaster as well. And I believe, I believe this is exclusive to the Comic-Con 
version. I don't think, I tried to look up pictures online and I did not see that the regular version had this unless the pictures that I saw just didn't show it. Um, so this might be exclusive. And uh, so that's pretty cool to, to have that. I wish they would have had, you know, the um, it in the regular release, but the regular release has a build a Megazord uh, part. So I guess, you know, that whole thing. I'm not going to get into that whole debate, but there you have it. So here's the figure itself. Looks really nice. They used, you know, the red metallic -y pearly paint looks pretty cool. Uh, definitely very, very interesting. Like I said, it's very similar to the, uh, the Mighty Morphin Red that they have as well. Um, that was an exclusive and then later, you know, another release of the figure. But, uh, yeah, so it's definitely pretty nice. I do like it. And the figure itself looks really cool. They use some nice gold paint as well. Um, overall, looks pretty cool, especially the chest piece right here, nice and shiny. Unlike uh, the butterscotch and some of the other figures, which I still will be reviewing soon, so stay tuned for that. That'll be fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so pretty cool. Articulation-wise is going to be basically the same, or similar at least to the other figures, but we'll go through it. Uh, so the head does rotate all the way up and down and around. Um, because there's no like big shield, you do have a lot more flexibility with the arms, so it can rotate all the way around. can rotate around like that. Um, double joint right there. Um, this whole piece right here does not rotate, though, it looks like, um, unlike the uh, the other Rangers. Uh, but the hand does rotate there. So, there you have that. Um, the chest piece does move forward and back, and the whole body does rotate sideways like that. You can do the splits. Um, the legs can kick forward and back. Uh, this whole piece can rotate as well. There you have it double joint at the knee. Um, the boot does not appear to rotate, um, so that is different. And then the, the, the feet are kind of the same, like swiveling, weird motion right there that looks like he broke his foot or something. So, um, and they do move up and down actually uh, as well. So that is, you have a little bit more flexibility on, um, on this one right here. So main difference being, I guess, uh, these pieces right here don't rotate, but that didn't really affect anything at all, to be honest, so no loss there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the figure right there. So again, you can put some of the items in the holsters as well. Uh, so the blaster can go on the side there, and then the little blade can go on the side right here, like that. And then he can hold his sword. So lots of flexibility in terms of the, the poses and different things that you can that you can do with it. Um, as you can see, we'll have them kind of charged up and ready to, to fight. There you go, very dynamic poses. And that's why I, I enjoy the Legacy line in terms of the articulation and everything. It's unfortunate that the quality control on Bandai and just their, their lack of well, a whole lot of things um, has has really ruined this this legacy line, unfortunately. But uh, these these you know figures are are still pretty neat. Uh, these Comic Con exclusives, I think, are, are still pretty decent and uh, worth checking out. As long as you're not paying a ton of money for them, that's really the unfortunate thing with Comic Con exclusives is finding them on eBay and elsewhere later is going to be quite the task. So. Keep that in mind, uh, but hopefully this review helps you kind of see the, the special differences with these figures uh, to let you know if it's worth it or not. So, my verdict, I, you know, I think, personally, I wouldn't be too bothered by trying to collect all the Legacy figures like this. Um, I don't even have the movie Megazord that they did that was metallic and stuff from some Comic-Con or Power Morphicon or something, I, it is just too much. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, so I, and, and the Legacy line as is, is already difficult enough for collectors. So I wouldn't be bothered by that. Um, I wouldn't try and go out of your way to get these. But if you are a huge fan of Zeo Red or like the, the alternate version of the Green Ranger from Fighting Spirit, if you just really love Tommy as well. Um, any of those options, this may be worth looking into at least and seeing if the price is too high or not for you. I, I think it's pretty cool what they did with this this set, um, the, the special differences from, from the Fighting Spirit episode, but I wouldn't go out of your way.
basically is what I'm trying to say just because of the price um, but yeah that's pretty much it guys hopefully you enjoyed this review of the fighting spirit legacy set uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you later if you enjoyed this review of these legacy figures then make sure to hit subscribe because I have more legacy figures on the way are you ready for more Zio we got Zio Green Ranger right there. Even some Dino Thunder, finally! Dino Thunder red and blue, super excited about those. And then of course, the infamous Butterscotch Zeo Gold Ranger right here as well. So this is the next wave of Legacy figures and I can't wait to, uh, to check these out and, and see what the deal is with all of these. So that'll be coming up soon as well. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Very close to 100,000 subscribers doing a huge giveaway at that point as well, including the Soul of Chikokin Megazord, some legacy figures and other stuff as well. So you'll wanna make sure to be subscribed and get ready for that soon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.